That right there is where the magic happens. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and this is Gamo's Replay 10 Maxim Multi-Shot, wait for it, Brake Barrel Air Rifle. Yep, it's a 10 shot brake barrel air rifle that loads itself. Pretty damn revolutionary. Um, nothing like this has been on the market to date. And I've got to tell you, and I'm going to say it in a nutshell, it works. It works. So let's talk about this thing in some more detail because this thing is really pretty cool. Um, no more trying to fumble and load a pellet into the barrel and make sure it's seated right. Nope, you have a 10 shot magazine, does it all for you. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but first of all, let's roll out some specs first. Now, there is a little bit of confusion with these when you, when you look at them on the internet. And I was even at IWA's, uh, at Gamo stand at IWA in Germany, talking to the rep about one of these, and I said to him, What's the power unit then? Is it Springer? Is it gas ram? And he was, he was humming an R in and I was like, um, okay, you're the rep and you can't even tell me what it's powered by. You go on different um, websites, they'll say, oh, it's a Springer. You go on other, other websites, they say it's gas ram. Right, I'm gonna put, put, the, yeah, put the nail in the coffin on this one. I've got Gamo's, um, basically their brochure, right? This is the replay one, this is the replay 10 Maxim. So, same gun, unless I'm getting this totally wrong guys, I'll apologize, you know, correct me in the comments. But according to their manual or brochure, it's got the IGT, which is the inert gas technology, gas ram, okay? Unless that's just in the synthetic, but I wouldn't have thought so. They're not going to change the power unit just because that's the wooden one. So, yeah, gas ram. Unless I'm totally wrong, and it won't be the first time if I am. But we'll, we'll look about. We'll look at this in a bit more detail in a second. I'll show you all the other specs on it. So yeah, gas ram. And it, to be fair, when I shoot this thing, it feels like a gas ram. There's no sort of twangy spring or anything. Anyway, back to the specs. So. Overall length of this thing is 1,170 millimeters. Barrel length is 457 centimeters. Overall weight is 3.2 kilos. Um, so it's it's not too bad actually. It's pretty well balanced to be fair. It feels good. It does feel good. I must admit. But oh my god! Look at that! Look at that! I can't wait to tell you more about it. Right then, let's tell you about the rest of the specs about it first, or the rest of the features. So it's got the 10, 10 times quick shot magazine, okay. Oh, I'm gonna save that for a minute, I'm gonna save that for a minute. It's got an internal, um, what would you call it? An internal, well they call it the Whisper Maxim, which is basically, and this is pretty cool actually, that is, although it's got this big sort of baffle on the end of it, big, big sort of muzzle break, uh, it is actually a shrouded silence barrel, okay? And it is pretty quiet to be fair. I thought it, this thing was gonna make a right, right sort of row as far as air, air rifles are concerned with that. But no, it's not too bad. That, I think that just gives it the cool looking factor as far as I'm concerned. But, like, we'll, we'll have a look, we'll have a closer look uh, at that in a second. Um, also, we've got the, what they call, uh, triple R, or recoil reducing rail, which is already built on to the rifle, because this rifle comes with its own scope. So you pretty much set up when you get one of these, it comes with Gamo's own, own little scope. Yeah, it's not amazing, but, it's good, it gets you going, you know, and for a rifle like this, you know, which I'd consider, would I use it for hunting? Probably, the power's there, definitely. Um, back garden plinker, probably more, but I think you'd be, you'd be all right sort of going around a barn or something, slotting pigeons with this thing. But anyway, 
let me talk about the magazine because it's just driving me mad so I'm not telling you about it. This is, it comes with two magazines by the way, one's already in it. This one's actually loaded up because um, I'm going to take this thing out for another session in a bit. 10 shot rotary magazine, dead easy to load, pretty self explanatory there. You just basically rotate it. They feel good, these magazines feel good. You know, they're not going to, um, you know, disintegrate in your hands, although they are plastic, they do feel pretty tough. And I did drop them on the floor a couple of times, but don't tell the guys that lent me this. Um, anyway, and then but basically you just load them up and then just sort of rotate them, get you on camera, rotate it like that, and they're sort of under spring tension, okay? That's how you load them up. And then, this is where the magic happens. I'm gonna put a loaded one in because I'm gonna cock this thing to show you and then I'll, I'll sort of fire it off camera. Once you've loaded the magazine up, you'll put it into this contraption here, which you can see, okay? So, as you can see, that's got 10 shots loaded in. You basically just drop it in here. Let's try and get this on camera nicely for you. Push it in until it clicks, okay? If you want to take it out, press this button here, and it's sort of, well, you sort of have to do this two-handed. I'm gonna try and do this on camera. Press, press that button there, and then just pull the magazine out, okay? So, they're that easy to load. But once you have loaded it like that, break the barrel in the usual manner, and I'm gonna try and get this on camera for you. Cock it, and don't ask me how it works, because I've tried sort of really looking in there, and you can't really sort of tell. But then once that's cocked, as you fold the barrel down, that pellet is seated in there absolutely perfectly and then you close the gun up and that is it you are hot the magazine cycled it's telling you that you've got nine shots left how cool is that how cool is that that is just do you know what guys I've you if you subscribe to the channel you watch rack and load you watch this channel you know I've done a lot of air rifles on here this thing, and I've done some high-end air rifles, you know, some real high-end ones. This one, I, I think, has excited me the most out of the lot. It's just, it's groundbreaking. A brake barrel air rifle that loads itself. And like I said at the start, it works. It really does work. Right, I'm just going to go off camera, just fire this in a safe direction, and I'll get back to you. Okay then, guys, I'm back. Now, I've swapped the magazine out, but... I've Imagine I've just fired all those 10 shots off. When you fired your last one, you get this little caution sign on the magazine, basically telling you that you're out of ammo, so don't cock it, you know, and then go and dry fire it. And then it's just a case of, like I showed you, press the button, pop that magazine out, and then drop in your ready loaded magazine straight back in. How cool is that? Once you drop the, those magazines in, you've got 10 shots without even having to touch a pellet. And they each time they are loaded and seated into the barrel absolutely perfectly. And trust me guys, I tried lots of different flavour pellets. Probably six or seven different flavour pellets. I even mixed and matched them in the magazines. Um, it was loading them, no problem whatsoever. I checked each one as I was closing the barrel, make sure they were seated right. Absolutely bang on. I'm so impressed, it is just so cool this air rifle is. Right, let's talk about accuracy then before we have a real sort of close, in-depth, detailed looking sort of usual rack and load style at the rifle itself. Now, accuracy wise, um, I, did, uh, I did do quite a lot of targets, but I've just got two here to sort of show you. Um, it, it was raining while I was, uh, well, as I was finishing up my shooting, so a lot of uh, my targets got a bit mushed up. But I found the best pellets for this were. Now, bear in mind, I've got to say this. Got to give you my excuses, guys, before I show you these targets. Recoil on this, it is a little bit jumpy. 
Yeah, even off a bench, you know, it's it's a little bit jumpy. So I've just got to say that. Now this was at 30 yards, so I'm quite happy with this. 30 yards with this type of, with a brake barrel or air rifle. Field target trophy, boom, there you go. 30 yards, three shot groups. I'm happy with that. You guys might not be, but for a rifle like this and me shooting, I'm more than happy. RWS Super Domes, pretty much the same. Uh, I used Acupels, I haven't got the target for that. Pretty much the same. Um, Sovereigns, again, pretty much the same. So, it was, it's pretty good on most pellets, to be fair. In my testing, in the pellets that I tested, I didn't test every brand, I just tested a selection that I've got. Um, RWS Superdomes, Field Target Trophy, uh, I've got the Sovereigns, I'm just trying to think what else I've got guys. Um, whatever, I've got one or two more, I'll annotate that in the video. So accuracy, not bad at all for a brake barrel air rifle, so you can't really argue with that guys, at all. Right then, let's talk about this rifle in more detail then. So, taking it from the stock end, so fairly hard rubber, um, the actual recoil pads or butt pad is. Uh, but it's comfy, you know, it's, it does the job. You know, that's it, that's pretty much all you can say about that. Um, the actual stock itself, the wooden stock, is quite nice, I think. To be fair, I'd probably go for the synthetic. You know, I've got this on loan. If I was to get one of these, I'd go for the synthetic myself. Um, and then the cheek piece, obviously, it's an ambidextrous stock. This is an adjustable cheek piece. I have loosened it off so I can sort of show you. So you can uh, basically adjust that uh, to sort of accommodate your build. You basically just tighten it up with the uh, Allen key there. And then moving to the pistol grip, you've got some nice sort of checker in there, which is very nice. And then let me just spin it around because I'm gonna, before I knock all my lighting over. And then moving along the rest of the stock, really quite nice and you've got like this um it's not rubberized but it's more of like a plastic um sort of grooves here to sort of aid your grip yeah quite nice quite nice the only thing i don't like about the stock is and i always look for this on on wooden stocks is if you can see here i don't know there's a bit of a weak point there they're a bit i think they're just a bit flimsy would that break in time if you knocked it? Uh, I don't know, just be careful. But that's probably my only criticism of the wooden stock. So there you go. And then let's talk about, let's talk about the scope that you get with it. It's not bad, it's not bad at all. What we got, and I don't even know what it is to be fair. <laughs> it's a three to nine times or oh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing, because I've not got my glasses on, I can't see. Let me just get you the box, that'd be easier. I can show you the box. Three to nine times 40, that's what I was gonna say anyway. <clears throat> so yeah, it's gamo zone. Um, yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. Um, it does the job, you know, you've got yourself, you've got, you're pretty much set up with this scope. This is the manual lock, the actual uh, scope that you get. Um, Pretty basic, it tells you everything you need to know. So, would you want to chuck on a better scope on this? Totally up to you. Um, I'd be happy with the one that you've got, unless you were going to sort of use this thing for hunting. And the good thing about this thing is, and I did wonder to be fair, is um, the mounts on it. I thought, ah, with that lot there, you're going to need some pretty high mounts to get over that. And when I first seen one of these with its own scope on, I thought, hmm, is that gonna sort of, especially when the magazine's in, I mean, it, it does raise it up, up a little bit higher. I thought, is that magazine gonna be in your field of view? But no, it isn't. Amazingly, it's not, you can't see it. So, that is pretty cool. Pretty cool, quite surprising actually. I really I really did think you'd be, there'd be a bit of a, a, bit of a blur out in your field of view with, that in front of the scope like that but it, it totally clears it so but yeah gamo have thought about it they've got this sort of uh, mount here to sort of raise everything up a little bit and then you've got 
a, like a high mount, one piece mount there anyway so um, they've thought about it, pretty cool um, does the job, do you know what I mean, it, uh, it does the job and like I say accuracy, not bad, not bad, I mean that's no high end scope by any means so and then let's talk about the trigger and the trigger guard. Trigger guard is metal. Um, the trigger itself is actually quite nice. Um, I, I haven't pulled it, I haven't weighed it with this being um, with like a non-PCP. I don't like to really dry fire them. Yeah, I should have really sort of pulled it on the, on the range, but take it from me guys, it's not bad. And there's your safety catch there, uh, forward of the pistol grip, uh, forward of the trigger even. Yeah, not bad, not my favourite. I'm not really that keen on safety catches that are right by the trigger if I'm fair. I'd sooner have a cross bolt or maybe on this one, I think better, a better one would have been one of those ones you operate with your thumb. That would have been better on this rifle. In my personal sort of, uh, that's my personal throw on it anyway. And then, this bit. The bit where the magic happens. <laughs> Absolute genius. God knows how many how many years it's took them to develop something like this that actually works, but oh my god, it works. If it didn't, and I was having problems with it, guys, you'd know I'd tell you on here. You know, I'm not going to BS you. Uh, that's not what this channel's about. But that is it, basically. It's like a polymer contraption. Um, I really don't know how it works. I know this so when you break it open, um, it's, there's a bit of there's a bit of sort of spring and cable stuff going on there but ah, I don't know don't know how it works but it just works that's that's all we need to know but it pushes the pellet in there so it's you know that's it that's it and like I said magazines just drop in you know it's as simple as that get them out push that button out they come. It is just so cool. I'm so impressed with that. And then moving along to the, well, while we've got that cocked, I'll show you the linkages if you can sort of really see them. Um, I, I've just lost the, <laughs> I've just lost the uh, stock that I hadn't tightened up if you wondered what that bang was. Linkages look pretty solid, pretty solid, robust, you know, nothing that's going to catch your fingers there as you cock it, which is nice. So pretty sort of, um, pretty streamlined actually. And then there's a barrel, you probably can't see down there because of all the, uh, the goings on where it, it self loads itself. Um, but no, moving along to the barrel, fully shrouded like I said earlier, so that takes a lot of the sound out. And then you've got this big baffle, muzzle brake thing going on which doesn't really do anything apart from make it look cool. I don't know, but who cares, it does look cool. So, you know, there you go. That is a cool profile as well. It gives it a nice chunky barrel. Uh, good to sort of grab hold of with it being a brake, brake barrel and cock, you know. Um, it's, it's a good meaty barrel, so that is really cool. Let me just pick the uh, stock up wherever that bounced off. Oh, it's gone somewhere. It's bounced across my room. But that is pretty much, um, pretty much everything on the rifle. I mean, let's talk about uh, the rest of the specs on it. I have touched on them earlier, but like I said, you've got the Whisper Maxim um, silencer or moderator, shrouded barrel, whatever you want to call it. That's it close up shows you the guts there so that is that is pretty cool really cool Re recoil reduction rail that's what i was going to talk about earlier i, I don't think i finished what i was on about um that is basically uh, let's get on camera that bit there uh, and i think you do need that because this does kick quite quite a bit let me just find my stock, it's bugging me having this on camera without the uh, cheek piece in, that's better. And then like I said earlier, um, inert gas technology, so gas ram, or as far as we know, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what it says in Gamo's uh, 
2017 Year of Innovation brochure. And then it's got the uh, CAT trigger, which is a custom action trigger. Uh, crisp, clean, trigger pull, improves accuracy. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. But the most exciting thing about this rifle is the 10 times quick shot magazine. You know, shoot 10 shots without ever, ever touching a pellet. Well, obviously you've got to touch a pellet to load the magazines up, but um, it's, it's just cool. It is cool. Cool, cool, cool rifle. I'm so excited about this thing. It's just, when I first seen these at uh, IWA in Germany uh, back in February, I was like, if that works, it's gonna be an absolute winner. And I've tested it, guys. I think I put around probably 400-ish pellets through this um, and different flavor pellets, like I said, and it was it was working. It worked, no problem at all. Um, you know, nothing, no jams, no bent uh, skirts on pellets, as I, you know, because I was checking each one. Not all of them, to be fair, but uh, I was sort of having a glance, make sure the skirts weren't damaged as the, as it was lo as the pellets were loaded into the barrel. Um, but uh, you know, I'm just I'm just totally and utterly impressed with this thing. And all I'm going to say, guys, is get one. Just get one. If you like your brake barrels, you know, then get one of these because it's a multi-shot brake barrel. <laughs> there you go. Right. Let me show you the. I'm just uh, gathering all my bits and pieces. All the brochures that you get. Uh, like I said, I mentioned the custom action trigger. This just is like a little brochure. It tells you bit more about it um, how it works how to adjust it you know lots of adjustment there that is pretty cool it's nice of them to throw in a, a manual about that um, the cheat piece as well the adjustable cheat piece tells you how to adjust that that's pretty sort of slow self-explanatory make sure you tighten it up not like what I haven't done and then the actual manual itself um, Pretty much um, really sort of detailed, um, quite impressed, apart from it's small and in black and white. Um, but it tells you everything you need to know, how to load those magazines into it and you know how to how to cock it and everything. So that is cool. That is cool. And obviously all your do's and don'ts and stuff. But um, but yeah. Brilliant, it's a brilliant bit of kit. Oh, I just love, I can't stop raving about this rifle, I'm just so impressed with it. But no, the, the instruction manual, uh, not bad at all. Not bad at all. I'm just reading what this says here about sliding there. Okay. So that can, uh, if you've got anything, if you have a bit of a jam up, you can actually slide the, uh, slide this to and fro to sort of seat the pellet better by the sounds of it. I should have read up on that earlier, guys, but... But like I said, I was using different flavor pellets. No problems whatsoever. So, but that is it, guys. I mean, just a bit of a... Uh, bit of a review on the Gamo... What, we, what we're calling this, the Maxim 10. I've heard it called a few different names, but... Uh, it is just so cool. So cool, a 10 shot multi-shot brake barrel air rifle with, dare I say it, gas ram technology. Stroke Springer. Mm, this one's a gas ram. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Anyway guys, that is it. That is your rack and load review of the Gamo multi-shot brake barrel air rifle. The Maxim 10. Thanks for watching guys. That's rack and load. See ya.